welcome back to Riggle's Picks. Five, 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 five. That sounded like a kung fu movie at the end. That was a little bit. It sounded like a <clears throat> balloon escaping air. Yeah. Uh, or air escaping a balloon. Yeah. That was a really good sentence structure. And then also a kung fu death move. Yeah. It sounded like uh, somebody was going to be ex- uh, unlifed after that. Unlifed. Yeah. I, uh, copyright trademark Rob Riggle. Uh, that is now my phrase. And uh, I want to put it on T-shirts and sticker bumper stickers. Okay, uh, unlifed. Yeah, get unlifed. Get unlifed. Yeah, that's a totally positive message. Hey, everybody! I'm Rob Riggle. With me, as always, Darren Leader. Yeah, you've been working on that. I have. Did you see? I came yeah, in? you came into Watch, that. Do it again. Uh, Rob Riggle and Darren Leader. Yeah, <laughs> that was fantastic. You put right. some swag on. Give right. me a fist. We're fist bumping now. Yes, we are. That was and, a fist bump for all those people who aren't watching us on camera. Which, by the way, you can. Go to the YouTube channel, mm-hmm. Riggles Picks YouTube channel, if you want to watch the episodes, which I think is a lot of fun to watch I, it. I do, too. I, I like how but we if look. You, but if you're listening, you're listening. I get it. So we, we're we going to call out the fist bumps and the high fives so you know when we're celebrating. And we got that from our friend Rob Rob Hubel. That's right. Rob Hubel gave us that advice. He said, you guys are idiots. Yeah, call people- it out. They, people can't see what you're doing. I said, ah, but they can because right. we're on camera. And if you go to YouTube, you can, you can watch that. Yeah, you can watch the magic that is Riggles Picks. Today, a very special episode of Riggles Picks. We have with us from Rascal Flats, Jada Marcus, everybody. <laughs> believe that! Believe that! What? That's believe that. Believe that. So was it believe that? Believe that. Believe that. Mm-hmm. Is that like suh? Suh, dude. Suh. Suh. Yeah, I think so. It's weird. Yeah, we'll get we, hip or get got, lost. We got to this place where That's we don't- That's my motto, get hip or get lost. Which motto are you going to use? Get on life or get hip and both, get lost? Both. They're both such opposite messages. Also, this podcast is dangerous. This podcast is dangerous. But, but it's awesome. But it's awesome. It, th- it is. And you know why I know that? Why? Because it's on our- Because it's on our t-shirts. Dude, stop it. Riggles picks. What does that say? It's dangerous, but it's awesome. It's dangerous, but it's awesome. That's a direct quote. Is that from some, the show? Is that something that you uh, would live your life by, as far as a mantra? Yeah, it's dangerous, but it's awesome. You want to do it only if it's dangerous, but it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, that's how I would like to live. Claire, are you out there? Yes, sir. Hey, so Claire's once again jumping in the breach for Gary. Um, and God bless you for that, Claire. Um, is Jay DeMarcus ready to go? He's not. Ah, good. What's Jay DeMarcus doing right now? I'm sure he's in Nashville making hit records. He's a big time producer now. Yeah, but he's supposed to be on the show. I, no, listen, I couldn't agree more. If we had to, if we, if this was Vegas and I had to put a prop bet on this, mm-hmm. chances are he was waiting for us and then he mismanaged his time between podcast and having to take a dump mm-hmm. and he just he had to like he's like i gotta go i you just think gotta he's go. on the pot right i now. think he's on the pot okay uh claire is he ready now no i think he's at a wedding actually huh also because hmm. gary was at a wedding gary's at a wedding and you J- think jay's at a wedding now do we think jay's at a wedding hmm. that's all the information i have that's well, how is he what time is it Nobody's having a wedding right I'm, now. I'm going to double check this. You should. Yep. No, I. Yep. I wrote him back. It, it, it's unusual. Well, maybe he maybe uh, he has the luster ran out on our show. No, 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 no. Look, he's he is clearly taking a, a, a private moment, a.k.a. a power dump. OK. That he he timed his coffee and the podcast poorly. Right. And now he's paying the fiddler. What's your time? What's your time from coffee to pot? Uh, coffee to pot is God. What do I mean? Are you are you a twenty minute man? Are you a forty five minute man? I'm a forty five minute man. Forty five minutes. So you look at your clock. You're like, it's ten o'clock. I'm having my coffee. I'm gonna be busy at ten forty five. Yes. Okay. Hold my calls. I get that. Ten forty five to eleven fifteen. You're busy. Yeah. Okay. And and you know it also there's all kinds of X factors that surround that. Understand. But, but that's the ge- that's the general. And and on average, I'm gonna just I'm gonna ask the real hard hitting questions. How uh, long are you me. spending time in the bathroom? Oh, I don't. I mean, America, America doesn't want to know that. The they world do. doesn't want to know that. I do, and I'll ask you. I'll tell you why. Hmm. Because I got introduced to fiber. 
Oh, man. You're the oldest, oldest of the old. Somebody turned me on to fiber, and I'm telling you, I got my life back. I'm so sorry. I'm in, I'm in and out in like our four minutes. Picks listeners, I, four minutes. I just apologize. Clean no, as a whistle. Oh, God. Nobody cares. It's, nobody wants to know. I walk out of there a little bit taller than when I went in. Please stop. No one is. A, no one asked. It's like magic. No one asked. I, I can't express the joy. Uh oh, I just got a text from our guest. Uh oh. You want to know what he said? What? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the show. Longtime listener, first time guest, um, legendary uh, singer, songwriter, and producer. Bass player. Bass player. Uh, and producer Jada Marcus is in the house. What's, What's up, up, boys? <laughs> yeah, Come on. there he is. We were just contemplating. We were talking. I said you mismanaged your coffee, and therefore you were taking a dump. When and 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 Jay and uh, of course you know uh, Darren jumped in and said, "Well, what's the ratio? What's the time frame from coffee to dump?" Mine's forty-five minutes. I assumed you mismanaged it, and it, it caught you off guard today. Actually, I didn't mismanage it. I'm, this is why it's blurred out behind me. I'm on the toilet right now, so I'm killing three birds <laughs> with one stone. You've got a huge bathroom, you Jay, are, and that's sh- awesome. You are. That is the biggest bathroom I've ever seen. One, I mean, see, country music is huge. It, it is it huge. Is. Obvi- but what I think is, I think we're losing sight of the fact that he's so committed yeah. that he's podcasting and dumping. And look how comfortable. Like, I mean, first of all, you look great. This is you're looking Thanks. physically physically fit. You're look you got a you got a glow about you. You know, you I feel like you're doing well. Yeah, look at that. You look amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and you're on the, you're on the hopper right now and you're unfazed. He's as conversational as ever. And I don't think you've touched on this, but he's leaning forward. So he's got something in front of the toilet that he's leaning on. Yeah. Right? Which which makes me think he's done this before. Well, he's a pro. Look, you- and you guys know both know uh, you got to dig your heels in sometimes and get a little leverage going yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost like you're yeah. riding a horse, like you're you're, you're spurring, spurring yeah. the toilet. Yeah, you're using exactly the ground right. for leverage. Using the ground for leverage. I like that. I appreciate it, Jay. It's nice to see you. Good to see you too, my friend. Yeah, both of you guys. Man, I miss you. I, like I miss rough there, Riggle. That's cool, oh. man. Man, I I am a legend in my Civil War reenactment group. <laughs> <laughs> they they love me. They you're the most authentic. They looking call one. me. They call me Colonel. That's awesome. It's nice because they also do it on and off the battlefield. Really? Yeah, which is kind of special. That's cool. You know? Yeah, have that kind of loyalty. Do you want guys. everybody to call you Colonel? No, please, just you and uh, a couple J- of and Jay. <laughs> no, yeah, not, not Jay. I'll not call Jay. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> What are you working on right now? Not in this moment. We know what you're working on in this moment, but what are you working on musically right now? You know what? We opened up a country division of Red Street Records a couple of years ago, so we've signed some really great acts, and I'm producing a couple of those right now, and I'm actually in the studio with Chris Lane. Chris was on Big Loud Records for the first five years of his career and came out of his deal last year and because he had opened for the Flats for a couple of tours for us uh we were good buddies and i sat down with him and he came over here and we're so thrilled to have him and it's been cool because now i get to make music with him and produce a record on him so it's been really really fun how much are you loving the producing side of the house you've been you've been on stage and touring for the last 20 30 years now you get to you know get back on the the making of music and helping uh artists make their music Uh, how much are you enjoying that it's really rewarding. I came to town to be a producer and a songwriter and accidentally became an artist twice. So uh, people hate to hear that because I wasn't <laughs> set out. Yeah, I wasn't setting out to be an artist, but because I was in different situations playing around town and being a sideman for a bunch of artists, I kind of fell into it. But I really wanted to be a producer from the outset. And I produced the last, I think, three Rascal Flats records. So oh, I really awesome. started to find my footing there and really rediscovered my love for it. And now that I'm at this label and have the good fortune of running it, it gives me a platform to uh, kind of do what I loved and what my first love was. So you, as a uh, um, as a producer, you're 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 you know living that dream now, but you still got the bug. For a performance, my brother, you still on stage. I see you out there with Generation Radio, still hooking and jabbing. By the yeah. way, an all-star lineup. To break down that band for us. Well, we started out with uh, Dean Castronovo from Journey, and he now is back in Journey. 
I think they got pissed off when they saw <laughs> saw him out with us doing all of their songs better than they do them right now. So, um, how good does that guy sing? He, oh my god, he's it's like a, a bird. He's a beast. Yeah. He's yeah. a beast. And I, and I I think that you know no slight to Arnell, I love him too. But some some of the songs he sings as well as Steve Perry did. I mean, he really does. And so, I love Dean. We started out with him. He went back to Journey. Now we have Steve Ferroni playing drums for us, who, you know, of course, Tom Betty, Petty and the Heartbreakers for 25 mm-hmm. years. Oh uh, average white band and, and just the, the list of credits goes on and on. And Jason Sheff, who was in the band Chicago for 33 years, uh, yeah. singing lead and playing bass. So it's we, really fun. I'm sorry, ahead, to inter- yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we got to touch on this because you brought up Jason. During the pandemic, uh, Jason and Jay and I would got on a few just... It was like a, it was a happy hour, yeah. Little Zoom that we would get on, sort of for sanity. Yeah. Uh, I met Jay through Jason Chef. Okay. Um, who I I met Jason Chef through golf. We did one of those one time. Oh, you were on it too. We did one of those. Yeah, you're on it. You were on it too. Yeah, because I remember I, we were sipping scotch during the during the pandemic. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I I love I I, well, I want to get back to that band, but I do love the fact that we there was a conscious effort to try to stay connected with other humans. And those little sessions that we had, yeah. they mattered to me. So oh, I just yeah. wanted to say thank you for that, for letting me be part well, of it. Was a, it was a happy hour that we couldn't have. Because right. uh, for you young, really young kids who don't remember <laughs> COVID, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't go to bars. You couldn't go to restaurants. You couldn't socialize. You couldn't even talk to your freaking neighbors. I can't believe we allowed that to happen as a society. I hope we never the, allow that to happen. You never quarantine healthy people. You only quarantine the sick. The further Remember away, that. The further away we get from it, the yeah. more insane it seems. It's uh, it was stupid. It was it was so mismanaged. It was so mishandled. But one of the things we did because we didn't know any better at the time, we got together via Zoom just like this, and we, we cocktailed and we. It was like hanging out at a bar. It was nice. It was it, really nice. It it. it, it, it it, didn't, it gave you some hope, yeah. and it gave you a feeling of community. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not trying to go down that road. I just, I wanted, you brought up Jason, so please continue with the band. Yeah. Well, no, I feel the same exact way. It was one of those things that helped me sort of keep my sanity, because after a while, and really, you know, going through those times, I found myself starting to drink earlier and earlier with each <laughs> passing week and month that we go. Yeah. I'd wake up at like 10 o'clock and go, well, Bloody Mary's not really drinking, right? I mean, <laughs> are we splitting hairs now? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Let's not get yeah. down to the weeds on it's this. It's got veggies <laughs> in it, right? Vegetables, right. yeah. <laughs> Right. So, um, I don't, I, yeah, the band is incredible. It's like being in a band of all of my favorite band members growing up, like the people that I uh, held on a pedestal and were my heroes musically growing up to be able to stand on stage beside Jason while he sings, will you still love me? And to look over my shoulder and hear Steve playing the groove to don't do me like that. It's yeah. like I'm living in a dream, you know? Uh-huh. And, I wish I could go back to my, you know, 16 year old self and go, hey, you're not going to believe this. But one of these days you're going to be on stage with these guys. It's really cool. That's amazing. And and are you uh, have you been able to tour or are you just playing locally or what are you doing? Well, we do about 20 to 25 shows a year. It's so it's manageable. Everybody awesome. has other side projects going on. Um, sure. You know, uh, Steve is out with the Dirty Knobs, which is basically Tom Petty's band. And so they, they tour a little bit and we kind of. um we leave enough room in our schedules to do generation radio shows, but I'm running this record label, which takes a lot of time. And of course yeah. there's that week in Tahoe that I have to leave open for us to. Go to. Uh, yeah. And so, so Jay, uh, that's what, that's where Jay and I met. Jay and I met at a, a golf tournament in Lake Tahoe. It's a big, big the tournament. ACC. Yeah. Uh-huh. The ACC, the American century uh, championship. And it is, it's wonderful. It's, it's a really cool environment, but Jay and I met there probably 10 years ago and we just hit it off instantly and we started cocktailing <laughs> and then we started cocktailing on the golf course which you know all these other jokers are out there playing competitive trying to win this right thing. marty fish yeah and, oh yeah. yeah and all these athletes i mean steph curry yeah. and and Ro- tony romo and i mean guys that really play the game well jay and i we know we're not you know we're amateur golfers and we know that and i'm very comfortable with that so we well, were, I got to say though, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but yeah. you've improved so much. He over hits the, the ball well. Years. Well, we he, can't even play together anymore because we're not yeah. in the same bracket. <laughs> it's true. I need you well, to play 
Sometimes. I need you to play a little more poorly. So we you can know play what? Together. Don't worry. I'm going to take it this year. I like <laughs> I like what Jay's saying because you, when you play me, you're like, oh, I'm a 12 handicap. I need all my shots. And I'm like, no, you're better than that. And you're like, no, I'm. But it's true. You're a good golfer. I beg for strokes. I beg for strokes. It's, it's yeah. pathetic. It's just the way it is. It's really sad to see. Jay is a fine golfer. He's playing him. He's, he's being humble and acting like he doesn't play that well. He he plays a good game of golf. No doubt about that. He's got a fun caddy. Uh, yeah. His caddy. Spoon. Spoon, Spoon yeah. is this wonderful caddy. Cracks me <laughs> up. I can just listen to Spoon all day. He's one of these super positive guys that – you know, just his energy is awesome. Whenever you're around him, he's like, hey, Pod. He calls you everybody Pod's partner, you know, right, short right. partner. <laughs> hey, Pod's, yeah. what's going on? You want to You want me to get you a drink? Let me get you a drink. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And he's always taking care of his golfer. He's always taking he care of Is he from Boston? No, he's from Northern California. Okay. Well, I don't know where he's originally from. No, he's from Northern California, but he has yeah. a weirdly Midwestern, uh, Northeastern kind of, he, hey, don't worry about it. Everybody goes into the water, okay? You're going to be fine. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't he's, worry about he's it. laying behind a tree, you know, in a bunker, and he's like, this is good. You're in a good spot. This is a good spot. <laughs> you don't want to be anywhere but here. Yeah, this is exactly where you want to be. We got him right where we want him. <laughs> Fried egg in a fairway bunker. You're perfect. <laughs> even even when he runs out of things to say, he'll say something like, okay, not our best. Not our best. <laughs> We're, let's ah! move to the next shot. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, that tells he's me the that best. if he's you the have best. a regular caddy, yeah. That's uh, that's more than most. Yeah. Well, yeah. and Spoon, but Spoon's a very successful guy. He owns his own golf course up in the uh, up in Northern California. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got a lovely family. He's he's a winner. He's a great guy. But he just loves the event and he loves Jay so much. That's awesome. That they, he's just like that's my week to spend with Jay. I mean, I think they plan vacation around it and everything. It's fun. That's beautiful. They do. Uh, you know, he's a retired uh, PGA pro. He was on the tour for about twelve years. Yeah. So. Yeah. He, so he, he knows. Had, he knows the game. Wow. He obviously hasn't helped me any at all, but <laughs> he, he knows how to play. I was sure. talking. I was talking with somebody recently about you know I'm I'm a very I'm a I'm a golf junkie and I play pretty decent golf. You play really good. He's a, he's a, basically a scratch. You're no, like a two I'm, handicap. I'm a three. Right You're now. a one. No, I'm a three. On paper, I'm a three. And somebody was saying, "Hey, you sh you know, would you consider trying to go? You know," and I, and I couldn't express. <laughs> enough the difference between the best amateur golfers that i know that yeah. are like literally scratch or maybe plus one or two yeah. and the worst pro on corn ferry <laughs> the worst pro on corn ferry yeah. would smoke an amateur an amateur yeah it's just a different animal yeah. it's it, you know and it's a different game it's played on a different level it it, it sounds yeah. different it looks different it smells it different. really does it's it's bizarre <laughs> yeah. and and like watching a pro hit a golf ball is is something that everybody should get to see it's yeah. it's awesome yeah you should go to a go if you go on to pick a good golf tournament come to come to american century you might not see pro level but you'll definitely have fun it is the most fun tournament i think i've ever been a part of ever there is I'm, no I'm doubt i'm grateful about. that i'm so grateful they asked me back every year because i i will i'll build my schedule around that that's thing awesome because it, it's that fun it matters that much they have hundreds of people on the list that want to get in and they mm -hmm. only have a field of like 90 oh wow yeah, yeah. The field they keep the field super tight how many tournaments do you do a year like celebrity tournaments. that one and then everything else is a question mark okay how about you well, Jay? i take that back i do i do one for the marine corps scholarship foundation those two are pretty much those staples are your, those are your locks yeah those are my locks other than that it's so we've know. also rob and i have also played together in the bmw tournament in greenville south carolina Oh yeah. but you've amazing. not been there the last couple of years i know i i, I <laughs> yeah. think i fell off their list i had to say no a couple times because of work yeah and yeah they I hate you now they told yeah. me they hate you. <laughs> wait a That's minute hold they, on they, they, they use those words we hate Rob Riggle. He is never welcome back. That's I didn't strong. want to say that on the podcast, but that, yeah, you just did though. You just well, you just did, and I'm, they said that. That strikes me as he got painted into a corner. How could he not say the yeah. truth? Yeah, that's true. They got painted no, into a corner. They volunteered that information. They would love. They would love, love, love to have you back. That's a fun tournament too. That's I <laughs> love the BMW in South Carolina. What, what track is that at? Uh, they play at three different tracks. Okay, but uh, uh, Green Point Blade is the. Thorn, Thorn, yeah, Thorn Thornblade. Blade. Thornblade is the primary, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful course, but they also play like two other courses. Okay. So everybody kind of plays a different course every day. And then that's if you make it to the final, I think it's at Thornblade. But that's a Corn Ferry tournament, too. So a yes. lot of those Corn Ferry uh, players are on there and we're paired with them. And it's great because over the years, 
you talk about pro golfers, it's also really great to see the other side and realize that they're human every once in a while when you get to see the wheels come off. I don't yeah. want to say it's funny, but it is kind of funny sometimes. <laughs> but it, it does make me feel like a human again when I watch yeah. these pros, you know, did you see? chuck it into the water or do something, you know, just a terrible shot. One that I would make. And I go, oh, okay. So they're did, human. Did you witness Tiger Shank? I did. I did. Can and then just, I noticed he withdrew the next day. Do you want to take a moment? Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yes. No, that was super sad. I know. Super sad. That was that was hard to watch. It was it was almost like the part of the superhero movie where, where he gets mortally wounded. and You're like, is he ever going to come back? But here's the thing, and we all know this: you can't have a comeback unless you dip. You know, unless you take a. You're totally unless right. You, yeah. Unless you lose, unless you're you right. fail, right. you can't come back. There's no comeback story without. There's no hero's journey without the comeback. So, right. When are you going to start your comeback? I mean, I I don't feel like I've had the because I feel like. You've had the lowest point. You have. You, you think I'm hitting? Well, you just a, said everybody's got to have a comeback. Before yeah, but I, I mean, point. it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm at that crossroad or I'm at that. I mean, it doesn't mean that, but that doesn't mean that it's not that. Uh, it is. It is that you're doing. A, a Thank podcast. you, Jay. Okay, you know I'm proud of the show, and I'm not well, at a crossroad. I don't feel that's accurate. Well, that's your opinion. What, what, yeah, it is. It's my yeah, it is, he's not wrong. It is your hey, look, Jay. We'll get on a you and I will get on a Zoom. We'll talk about it later. You don't have yeah. to do that. I'm right here. We can all talk together. But let's, let's just remember when remember when Rob was in movies and things. And he was, <laughs> I, dude, you doing, were you were awesome. I'm still were, making movies. You were, I made a movie with Sean William Scott just a month ago down in Alabama. Has anybody seen it? It's not out yet. Exactly. There's still there, no one post. has seen. No one's seen it. We don't know if your comeback's real. I'm doing a movie in April. I'm doing you, a movie in April. You're working with Stifler. I was, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, hmm. Sean William Scott, great okay. actor, funny guy, so nice. That's well. You know what? Seriously, high five for the listeners. We're rooting for you. Just know that. I hope that was a sincere. Jay and I hey. actually have. We have an idea for a TV show. Uh oh. I don't want. I'm not going to say it here because people are thieves in Hollywood. Yeah, they'll, they'll steal it. They'll they steal will. it. But it's it's a really funny uh, show. You're see, you're even getting ready to write it down now. <laughs> I can see that. I'm not saying I'm not going to say what it is. I'm just going to say it's hilarious and it's a it solid is. piece of gold. It's no, a solid. I'm, I'm not writing anything. What? What? Tell me. No, I'm not going to tell because, like I said, there are thieves out there. I can't tell you how many amazing ideas. I had an idea about uh, a historical movie. Okay. Right. That uh, this couple falls in love. One guy's poor. One and the girl's rich, and. Hmm and their ship sinks halfway across the Atlantic, right? Next thing you know, <laughs> they made it with someone wow. else. That's, that's uh, uh, have, have you seen Titanic? I don't even like to say it because those that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I've been burned so many times yeah. in this business. James been, Cameron snaked your idea. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I have been snaked in this business so so many times. Hey Jay, have you ever been ripped off? Had a song ripped off from you? You know what? I haven't had a song ripped off from me, but I've been sued a few times. Uh, uh, unsuccessfully yeah. on their behalf. Unsu you know, un unsuccessfully by somebody really famous too. Really? Oh god! It was total bullshit, and he lost both cases. Uh, did you? Did you bad. go to court yourself? Good. Did you show up in the court? No, it, it never got that far. Our attorneys yeah. talked. We had a musicologist come in and say, okay, there are 85 other songs with the same changes that this song has. So, yeah, it's, you know, you know it, it's amazing because there's only 12 notes. If you don't count semitones, there's yeah. only 12 notes. And there is there are only so many combinations mm -hmm. that are going to be appealing to the human ear in generally. Right. Right. And so as t as we keep going. Yeah things are going to get repetitive yeah. and that sue window gets smaller and smaller and smaller but yeah. like at some Ed point Sheeran, Ed Sheeran made his case yeah you know it it's yeah. it's a, it's difficult because the longer songs more songs that are well, written I, the I less... get solicited uh, uh from everybody wants to send me their script everybody wants me to look at their or hear their idea or and I always have to stop them really I stop them cold oh yeah I'm like yeah. don't say a word I don't want to see it I don't want to hear it no 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 right because there's a channel you send it to my agent send it to my manager you know if if you really have this thing you better register it you know because 
because what they love to do is say, I told him about it, and then he went and did something similar to it. And so that's why I won't take any ideas from anybody. I got an idea. I won't yeah. do it. I got an idea. No, stop. See, this is what I'm talking about. Right. Because you're just, you've been wanting to sue me for a long time. <laughs> And this is this is what he does, Jay. This is what he does. Well, check this out. Well, this is here's the here's my idea. Uh, no, I'm begging you to stop, Jay. Do you have it copyrighted? <laughs> Copyright trademark, Mark Rebrigle. Mm -hmm. God, God damn I it! Say, I have to say that all the time. I have to say that all <laughs> the time with this guy. You guys Jay, snake. You guys snake weenie ride for me. I wrote that first as a country song. So <laughs> do know. you know? So do you? So there's a song out there called "Steel Panther Fucked My Girlfriend," <laughs> and. And uh, we, you know, Wheeler Walker Jr. You know who that oh, is? Oh, of course, yeah. He cut that song, and if Did you, he really? you, yeah, if you go, you can go find it. It's it's pretty amazing. Have you ever heard of Wheeler Walker Jr.? Yeah, of course, of course. He's a dirty, dirty yeah, man. He's a dirty, dog. dirty, dirty man. man. He's a very, he's a country version of Steel Panther. It's pretty amazing. I've wor I've worked with uh, uh, him on a different project in the past. Oh, really? Actually, yeah, um, a comedic. Uh, I want to hear about that experience. It was a, it was a TV show, actually. That's cool. Um, but uh, um, Jay, you wrote a book several years ago that I read uh, before I came up to Tahoe, specifically because I wanted to have it completed by the yeah. time I saw you again. You know, because I, it was truly such a, a powerful book. It was such a Thank wonderful you. look into your life and your journey, and very honest, very vulnerable. Um, what was it like writing that book? Well, it was very therapeutic. Actually, I think it probably, I was trying to write it to help other people, but it probably helped me work some things out that I didn't even realize were unresolved at the time. And the name so, of the book is Shotgun Angels, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Shotgun Angels. If you're looking for it, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it anywhere. It's a best-selling book, but it's a phenomenal book. So sorry to interrupt. Tell us, uh, keep going, please. Thank you. It, it literally sold by the tens. And so- I'm <laughs> Not true, not true. That's not true <laughs> no, at all. It was kind of, it's kind of the story of my journey and shotgun angels is referencing the people that come along in your life that you don't even realize why you need them at the moment they come but that you find out as you look back why they were there in that chapter of your life and why they came along when they did and my faith has always been very very important to me and I've, I've, it's always been my compass you know i don't yeah. do a great job of being the best christian in the world but I do have a great foundation that my mom uh, laid for me when I was very, very young. She drug us off to church a few times a week. And I went through my own phases in college and early adult life, of kind of deconstructing everything and figuring out if I believed it because I really believed it or because my mom told me to believe it. Yeah. And I went on this journey and the book sort of chronicles that journey of finding my own path and my own way and realizing in the end uh, how much my faith played a role in the decisions that I've made in my life. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I just there there are a lot of things in the world that are inexplicable. But there's one thing that I've been able to look back over and I, I feel like God had a hand in every path that I've, I've taken. So, you know, it's not preaching in any way. It's just my own journey. And hopefully yeah. if somebody out there that needs a little bit of hope, uh, this is the book that says, you know, just keep picking yourself up and moving forward. I couldn't agree more. I, I, I read it. I, I was moved. Uh by it i was moved by your your story and, and the things that happened in your life the things that led you to where you are and i think i think most people uh you know wrestle with faith uh, or wrestle with their understanding of the world or god or or the universe or whatever it is they wrestle with it they believe things they've had experiences in their life that shows them you know yeah there is something bigger than me or yeah you know this the, you know if i have faith in this uh, whether it's God, Jesus, whatever, you know, whatever their faith may be, whatever they find strength and truth in, uh, it's amazing. And and I think a lot of people, almost everybody probably wrestles with whatever their faith. Uh, yeah. They, rest, they wrestle with, with what that is and what it means to them. So it was, by the way, I think the book. biggest, I think the people that claim to be the biggest Christians and the biggest believers are the ones that probably struggle with it the most, you know? Yeah. And so I, it's it, that's why I've never put my, myself in a place. I mean, if somebody asks me what I believe, I'm happy to have that conversation. But I've never put myself into a place to be like one of these people that browbeat people with the gospel yeah. or, you know, preach because it's a constant journey for me to figure it out, too. Sure. You know? It's a, it's hard sure. when people get preachy on a on like a like a friend, yeah. like you know, and they get preachy like I being a, an individual who has his own thoughts and yeah. all those kinds of yeah. things. If I'm if I'm looking for stuff, I'll go seek it. 
Yeah. You know, but when when it comes at you, yeah, it's just hard. Well, and it's, I think it's, it's almost to... almost an opposite effect. You just go, oh, I don't want to. I I'm, I don't want to yeah. hear this unless you're open. Yeah. But you, I think you need to make yourself. You know, it you need to make it evident that you're open because there's a lot of people that are just like, well, I'm. I do what I do. I'm in yeah. my lane. You know. I always I always just think just be the example. You know, if 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 you're strong in your faith, just live a good life and let that be an example. Let that be your you're uh, um, witnessing. I guess really it comes down to don't be a dick. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> I mean, better said that I, way. I guess I it's, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's all, one all of the uh, that's commandments. one of the ten commandments, right? Yes, I'm not sure, but yeah. Well, I actually, so. that was number eleven, but it got cut off on the bottom. <laughs> right. Thou shalt not murder. Don't be a dick. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the Lord it, has sent these <laughs> ten commandments. <laughs> Probably one of the best comic bits so ever. Good. Is when he's these fifteen, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. these yeah. ten, these ten commandments. Those other fifteen were don't be a dick. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we got to list, out, figure out the other five that he, it, one of the tablets. But he but I mean, honestly, aside from that actual phrasing or verbiage, yeah. if you if you're good to people, that that's, I mean, th everything would be so much cooler well, it's if, we, the golden if everybody rule. was cool. It's the golden rule: just do unto others as you'd yeah. have done unto you. And if people just applied, that means don't cut off a guy in traffic. Yeah, that means don't flip someone off. It means return the twenty. It means all the things. Like well, I, I was very proud of myself the other night. I was in Kansas City. I gave the lady a twenty. She gave me five twenties back. Amazing. Yeah, and I was like, no, no, no. I had to come clean. That was too much. Yeah. of an error. That's, yeah, yeah. You know what? I, get I feel that. like people, though, going back to our, our earlier conversation, I feel like since COVID, though, people are more pissed off and more angry and mean to each other than they've ever been before. Yes, I agree with you. I there's, really a, do. There's, a, there's a lack of civility that is very abundant, very clear. And I don't know if it's also, here's another thing, that god dang telephone is, is yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. like a rat it's the hitting ruiner. the feeder bar. To get yeah. more food, because I just sit there and go like this, and the algorithm figures out what I'm I'm looking at, it's right? Scary. So it just feeds me more of what I, you know, I think some of those Karen videos are funny. Uh, so yeah. now I get I get a never ending feed of Karen videos, and I'm like, my God, there are a bunch of terrible people out there, you know? And that's Dude, not that's not the truth. There's a couple terrible people. I had to erase way less than there are good people. I'm sorry to talk over you. Yeah. I had to, to remove a couple apps that I will not say the name of mm -hmm. on my phone because when I was opening it. What do they rhyme with? <laughs> uh, <laughs> checks. <laughs> um, every video was fist fights and, and you know, guns and, and like, uh, like negative, like. Yeah. Uh, you and know, it's feeding you, feeding rage. you, feeding Dude, you, feeding you. I feel you. my body tense up watching yeah. these videos and I was like. I don't need this. Yeah. I don't need the extra stuff. I'm already dealing with what life, whatever's in front of me. And how many hours Bro, does that freaking phone steal from you on a daily? It sucks life on a regular yeah. basis. So I actually, f I have to physically tell myself, put the phone down and look up. And, yeah. and it's just as simple as that. Sometimes I look up at the sky and I it, r it reminds me, because if, if we're here all the time. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're just, you're in that world. And if you put your phone down and you just look around, go on a five minute walk. Walk. And yeah. look. And yeah. it's just, you can, you feel. I knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble when I complained constantly that I don't have time. I'm, I just don't have time to get things done. And then I would be finger blasting my phone. <laughs> yep. Right? Looking at, <laughs> looking at stupid, stupid, stupid stuff, useless yeah. stuff. And someone would come in and be like, hey, I thought you said you were busy. And I'd be like, oh, get out of here. I'd be frustrated. That's when I was like, oh, I think I've got a problem. Like, that's an addiction. Do. Like that, When you have a bad reaction to someone interrupting your phone mm -hmm. time, that's some sort of weird addiction. So I was like, okay, we, we got to reprogram this whole deal here. You ever tried to, try you to were take an iPad? With you you were okay. sharing with me that you kind of got to that point with porn, too. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 You okay, Rob? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I was just I got a little, right? went down the wrong pipe. I just choked up a little bit. I think he missed the thing broke up and he missed got misunderstood. And, hey, <laughs> he's talking about your porn. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, man. Have you ever tried to take an iPad from a ten-year-old? Oh, oh, it's geez. horrible. It's like I, taking a bottle of whiskey from. 
Yeah, it's yeah. it's insane. The it spa is. the spazziness. Yeah, it's, your kids are talented right now. It's a great punishment, though. You know, because mm -hmm. so addicted to it. It's like the first thing I say is, "I'm going to take your iPad from you." And he's like, "No, no, no, I'm good." Right. But I'll do so, whatever you say. So I had a friend. Uh, well, not a friend. It was an acquaintance, and it was a mother in a friend circle or whatever. But she had a clear like fish tank with a, a lock on the top of it that was time coded right so she would take the kids phones put it into the fish tank secure the top it was locked and she'd put 24 hours Brilliant. and that thing wouldn't unlock for 24 oh, hours wow. so the kids had to sit there and look at their phone i love and that. not be able to get to it and she'd leave that's it on so the kitchen great. live it on the kitchen island I'd love that. And I was like, wow, now that's that's the new hammer. Hey, man. You know, like the children of the 50s or whatever, they used to get a swat or, you know, a, a pound or a beating or whatever. The new hammer is the put the phone. Time lock. A time lock your phone on the kitchen island where you, you have to walk by it and see it every day but can't get to it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You know, I think I think we should – I think there should be a time of day, a universal time of day where we all put our phones down for one hour. Oh man! Could Just you put imagine? it down, or it shuts off. Nothing, and you have to deal with yourself and your family or your friends, like. For or just real. get your work done. Yeah, yeah. Just, one hour. Yeah. One hour. Or this this morning, how about I. This? If your dinner with your wife, she puts it down while she's sitting across from you, <laughs> just for a minute. Just yeah. Minute? Like I had to tell my boy the other night, he was at dinner and he had it under the table. I was like, put it down. Yeah, you know, dude, and, he, yeah. and he did. I mean, he, he he does, but left to his own devices, he wouldn't. Right. Oh, I get it. And, and same thing to this morning, uh, I, I was going through a drive through and the guy was sitting there working the phone. He took my uh, credit card, plugged it in, never looked at me, you know, took it back, gave it back to me and and then closed the window uh, without giving me my receipt because he was too uh, he was too busy. He was just too busy on his phone. doing I'm whatever. sorry about there. that. I had to do my Instagramming. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, 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 oh, Jay. <laughs> See, this is it's epidemic. Yeah. Man. Well. We need we need to deal with this, Jay. Yes, sir. When am I coming down to Tennessee next? And when I get there, are we playing high stakes golf, low stakes golf? What are we doing? We're playing Fishing? high stakes golf, golf okay. club of Tennessee. Okay. Uh, how did you, has your episode aired yet with uh, Mr. Shelton? I haven't seen uh, it. Oh yeah, matter of fact, it did. That was the last time I was down in Nashville. I shot uh, Barmageddon. Uh -huh. With Blake Shelton and um, uh, uh, Carson Daly, I think was his, his yeah. co-host, and uh, so Jay and I snuck out uh, after we got done filming and played a round of golf. Where was it? Where'd you guys play? Golf Club Tennessee. Is it's that near, is that near Governor's Club? No, it's a uh, it's out in Kingston Springs. It's a little further out. Um, okay, it's beautiful out, though. Out west and uh, Golf Club or um, Governor's Club is south of town. That's okay. a great th course too, by the way. I, th I think I've played Governor's Club, and I think I've played Vanderbilt. Is it Vanderbilt? Probably has Legends. Sure. Yeah, Legends. I've played mm -hmm. both those courses. I mean, just amazing golf courses. Tennessee does a lot of things right. They sure do. And one of them is golf. Yeah. And the other one is no state income tax. That's a cool thing. Yeah. That's a really. And, and they do country music. And they do country they do. music. They yeah. do well. Titans, not so much. But anyway. Well. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a Chiefs fan. You sound like you're gloating a little. Yeah. I, look, I mean, did we win two Super Bowls in a row? Yeah. Uh, has it been, what, three years since we won a Super Bowl? Yeah. I mean, the calendar years, sure. Right. It's a long time on top is what I'm saying. Long time how the many, king of the mountain. How long ago did the Titans win a Super Bowl? Oh, they have Never. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, Never. But Jay, Jay, in Jay's defense, he's a Bengals man. He's okay. A, he's a Bengals man. Are you so, from Cincinnati? I'm from Columbus originally, so you're either a Browns fan or a Bengals fan. And right. my dad was a Bengals fan, so I sort of grew up with it, you know. Okay, well, I guess that's being that's better than being a Browns fan. Well, they went it to the is. Super Bowl just three years ago. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. only time the Chiefs haven't been in the Super Bowl in the last five years was the one time his team went, so. Why do yeah. you say it like that? I don't, how to say it like what? You sound like, you know, uh, you sound like entitled. Yeah. Oh, I was just really? saying four out I never of the last five years, good. the Chiefs have been in the Super Bowl, and they've won three. Um, I never thought it would change you like this, though. It's really not a good look on you. It's, it's not becoming. I'm not, it's I'm really not. I really don't understand what you guys are talking about. It's just well, four out of the five last years. This is all. No. This is facts. You can look it up. I encourage people to look it up. Google Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, World Champions, 
uh, most dominant team in history. Just Google that. Right. And, and you sure about that? Yeah, fact? these are facts. I don't think, these are facts. I don't think that facts. is accurate. Patrick at Mahomes, all. greatest athlete of all time, greatest quarterback of all time, uh, not in question, above reproach. Mm-hmm. Google that in. That's not. That's and you'll, how is you'll that see, a fact? Those are facts. They're facts. I don't. I don't. I don't know how facts are made or not made. Okay. I just know facts are facts. Hey, by the way, I just touched this shirt. This says "Restless Spirits" on it. That is a Kansas City distillery. Jeff Robbins, our mutual friend, Jay. Yeah. Uh, he was on a cocktail hour with us one time. He, he, he was. was. He, he was, was on a like, cocktail yeah. hour with us. Yeah. Uh, this is his company. So shout out to Restless Spirits in Kansas City. They make uh, really, really good, good whiskey. Oh, that's just a stone cold fact. We, Again, another fact. We need. That's to, what I operate in dealing. I'll Google stone that too. You yes. should Google that. We should do an episode where we drink. I I like it. Just saying. I just think it could be dangerous. No, one it, one man. But is that's da- what this show is. The show is dangerous but awesome. It is dangerous but awesome, and 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 I think that if we uh, didn't do that, we would be doing a disservice to our listeners. Jay, they want it. I feel like they want it. Jay, you focus a lot on gospel music and country music. I think well, that took a left turn. With uh, with <laughs> with red with red with red lane, red street. Red street, yeah. Red street. It's not a lane. It's not an it's avenue. It's the entire street. It's the street. Yeah. Okay. The whole thing. Um, do you do any rock and roll acts? You know what? We're not. Or have you even into, considered it? Or is it just not I on your? I definitely radar? considered it, and there are some acts out there that I would love to work with, but we don't have the infrastructure to really service them the way that they deserve to be. Yeah. So uh, we're not in the rock space yet. That's not to say we won't grow again and maybe open up a division there, but we're trying to uh, the best we can to have success in country music first until we uh, bite off another genre. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? I guess I can. This is a podcast and we're yes, hosts. Yeah. Why? What makes Taylor Swift different than Carrie Underwood, besides the obvious tone of their voices and their individual beings. What makes a Taylor Swift go to that hyper level and Carrie Underwood goes to like superstar, but there's a there's a thing. Well, Taylor's were all, is the only one in her category. No, I understand, but okay. I'm saying, what, it, what do you think that thing is? Is it quantifiable? Is it a vibe? Is it a song thing? What would you, in your opinion, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, first of all, I have great admiration and respect for both of those artists and what they've been able to achieve. Second of all, I had the privilege of watching Taylor on her very first tour when she opened for us in 2008. And there was something intangible about her and watching her from the side of the stage that you can't describe until you witness it. She had a drive and a tenacity that you don't find in very many people. She also was committed to songwriting like she was a maniac about songwriting from the early age of I think um, Troy Tomlinson at Sony told me when he signed her to her first publishing deal, she was like 12 or 13 years old. So this kid came to town with already a defined vision of what she wanted to do and who she wanted to be and how she wanted to say it. And over the entire summer watching her and watching how she paid attention to everything from who we hired to do the catering at the shows, who did our lights and how do you find the company that you lease your trucks from? She was involved in every single aspect of her career from day one. I've never seen anybody that has the work ethic that she has. And I love Carrie too, but and Carrie, I think has written a couple of her songs, but she, she is a singer first and not really as involved on the songwriting side. And I love, obviously love Carrie's voice, but there is something about Taylor that is extraordinarily driven that you don't find in very many people, especially her age, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's not to say Carrie Underwood is an immensely talented. That's not what I'm saying, but you know, there's, there's levels to this thing and and bands or and artists hit certain levels and you have the U2s and the princes of the world. (laughs) And then you have, you know, Timmy. The Rascal Flats. You have, you have <laughs> yeah. the Rascal Flats. You have the Rascal Flats. You have the, you. J, you have the Generation Radios yeah. and those <laughs> superstar bands. Yeah. And then you have, you know, Timmy's Backyard Barbecue Band who jams in the backyard. And it's like, it's interesting to me about in the music business, what propels an act 
you know, as far as they go, what what the difference is, and if they're all things being equal musically, what is it? And so I'm hearing from you that it's it's that drive and the yeah. vision and the focus. It, it, really it, was, can... it was truly extraordinary to watch. I knew early on, you know, um, Taylor took a lot of hits early on, and I can say this because we did too. We were derided as a boy band when we first came out. Everybody's heard negative things about your career at one time or another, but you know, in the beginning, she was hated on for not being a great singer but i knew watching her that there was something extraordinarily special about her that she wasn't going to stop and we all have if you're in the entertainment business whether you're an actor or singer or whatever you do we all have to have a little bit of luck sometimes you, you just have to be but when you have that lucky moment you have to be prepared and right. i feel like she's one of the ones that over prepared for that moment and she was ready for when it happened you know yeah it's it's fascinating. That's fantastic to hear too, because you know there there are there are mega talents in this world, and they come around, uh, you know, and they're sometimes they're once in a generational type talents. Sometimes, sometimes they're inexplicable. Sometimes you just never know why. But but to see someone, there's always usually a pretty good reason why someone makes it to the stratosphere, and it's yeah. probably work ethic, it's talent, it's a combination of all things. There's sure. never usually one silver bullet solution, but there's usually a combination of incredible work ethic and talent that, yeah. go, that go hand in hand. That's awesome. I've always, I've always been one of those people that felt like they were probably more talented musicians and better singers and songwriters, but I wanted to be the guy that nobody could outwork. Like I, when people were sleeping, I wanted to be working and I wanted to be prepared and overly prepared. And I feel like that's one of the biggest reasons why I've been able to achieve what I've been able to in my own career is that it wasn't that I was the most talented guy, but I was one of the hardest workers you would ever find. Well, and you have uh, your career with the flats. Was, it's phenomenal. It was a 20 plus year run of just hits after hits after hits songs. I still sing summer nights. I still sing, you know, uh, um, uh, you have so many wonderful inspirational songs too. Um, I, I'm going to be the guy that asked the question. I got to do it. Uh, the flats, you know, I know you guys aren't, are, are working on other projects and I, you know, but you, your fan base is tremendous after that, that many years. Uh, are we going to ever see you guys reunion? Are we going to see a, maybe a, some sort of, I don't know, farewell tour. Yeah. I don't know something. I'm sorry. Your microphone was breaking up there. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> <laughs> yeah. well just uh, just as a just as a as a flats fan you know just no, as a fan. I, I, I get asked it all uh, all the time and, and and you know i am one of those people that holds out hope that someday we'll be able to do that and be back together on stage one of the things that really sucked about the pandemic was as you know we had scheduled our farewell tour and we were going to go out and give everybody a chance to say goodbye and yeah. us a chance to thank our fans for what a, a mind-blowingly wonderful career and it was snatched away from us. I mean, the tour was canceled. We never got a chance to reschedule it. The last time, and this makes me emotional talking about it, and you'll understand, Darren, what I'm talking about, but you know, the last time I was on stage with guys that I'd been brothers with for 20 years, I didn't know it was the last time. And we never got to give it its proper goodbye. And it's really sad to think that we were at that casino and none of us knew it was the last time we'd ever be together. And so, so so you, yeah, I mean, it's powerful. It, it's yeah, that is, it's amazing, and and you know that goes for everything. Nobody knows when it's going to be the last everything. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Um, but it sounds like you're hopeful that you'll get an opportunity to to sort of like full circle the whole thing. I mean, it sounds like you have optimism for it. I do. Well, you know, several things happened. Uh, Jodon went through an incredible journey. Uh, he got pulled over for a DUI, ran into a tree went to rehab. He's two and a half years sober now, and he's in a wonderful place in his awesome. life and uh, doing really well. And that's very important to him right now, as it should be. Yeah. But we started to talk again and started to open up communication again. Gary's been doing his own solo dates for the last couple of years. So I hold out hope uh, because I miss it as much as everybody else misses it. But yeah. I hope someday that there's a path for us to get back together and make some music again someday. And, and I, I don't, I think the, um, the more time goes by, the closer we get to that moment to where it's a possibility. I, yeah. I have a question. Uh, I, we, we don't have a lot more time, but I have a question about songwriting. When you wrote your first bona fide hit, right? 
did you mm-hmm. know did you know when you had finished the song that it was going to be successful or did you was it just another song that you had finished writing or did you go there's something special about this one i think in the room you can feel that goosebump factor of having something and having caught lightning in a bottle uh, mm-hmm. that certainly doesn't happen with every song but there are those moments when you finish one song and you listen back to a work tape or a demo of it and you go man nothing is an exact science in music but if i had to bet i would bet that's going to be a hit that's and cool i think it's just your gut and it guides you in those moments and you know nine times out of ten knock on all the wood i can we've been right about those you know that's, so uh, that's a, that's even, a great that's got to be a great feeling we played with you guys one night we came in to see you guys uh, i you remember know that? I do. I do it. It was such a an interesting combo. And it was like, we got Joe Don Rooney and we got Jay DeMarcus from Glasgow Flat. And the place went ballistic. Yeah. And it, it was so just, fun. It was such a cool, you know, mashup. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was so cool. And, you know, it that's fun seeing, you know, getting to chat with you, you know, over the years, a few times on the Zooms and doing this, your career, it's it's so uh it's so impressive i'm not trying to stroke you but uh, no, I mean, straight up it. to have the kind of career and the path that you have created for yourself is a testament to your talent and your work ethic and i applaud you yeah yeah and i appreciate I that. that that means a lot thank you thank you yeah. so much and your golf games you know it's mid uh oh wow but no, i'm just saying like that got stingy no no i didn't mean it's wow. stingy i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying on top of doing accomplishing all these things and the things you continue to accomplish author songwriter producer you know uh, uh legendary band member you know uh-huh. and yeah. he plays golf you and know? he at, at mid is what you said did i say yeah mid? you play yeah. very mid golf well i mean listen i'm a mid golfer so i'm not I'm, i don't feel like i'm throwing rocks i don't feel I, like i've got a lot of imdb credits too you're forgetting my acting career uh, oh that's snap. right and jay wants yeah. to be jay yeah. is is wanting to pursue acting too so that's why we're we have this tv idea oh th- no, no, no! I'm not telling you. You quit. Put, put your pin down. Dang it. I'm not telling him. You'll get. You'll tell me. Uh, We've talked Jay, about that idea for eight years. I know. We, we have. We have, we have talked about it. I believe it. We've talked about it for eight I years. Believe it. And I feel bad that we haven't actually put pen to paper and and written the script. No, I'm not. Stop. Um, <laughs> but but when it happens, it's gold. I mean, it's it's it's, it's done. It's, it's that sold. Feel, it's it's the feeling in your gut where you're like, it's a hit. Sorry, so, Kevin Rom still asked me about. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Rom was in the bar the night we came up with the idea. Kevin Rom is a wonderful actor, great, uh, great golfer, nice guy. Uh, supports uh, uh, all the charities, and he's just his heart is so. He does a, a big event for St. Jude's, okay, uh, out in Jacksonville, Florida, um, called the Rom Golf Tournament, and uh, it benefits St. Jude's out there. And he's he's Seems a little self serving, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's for the kids, baby, and we played in that tournament, Jay. We played in yeah, that tournament we together. Did. That's what yeah. Jay and I. Jay and I spent a lot of time playing in charity golf tournaments. Well, if you guys ever need a fourth, always, Jimmy always, D man, always, Come on. always, especially a ringer like you, bro. I'm gonna show you a video. I went to went to the golf shop yesterday, and I I hit a driver. Uh, with a new setup. You know how many times I've heard this, Jay? Dude, I'm this gonna... man spends too much time I, in the golf shop. I took the video of the replay of the track, man. Oh it's going to freak your sack out. And he'll he'll actually show it to me and, and make me watch it. And You're going to get comment sad. On it. Over and over again. Over oh, yeah. and over. Over and over, yeah. yeah. Hey, let's show up early to Tahoe this year and just party our faces off. Or stay I'd, later. I'd love to. Doesn't uh, matter to me. I'm good for either. I love it. Are you going to do the Wild West uh, shootout again? Yes, this year. So no, keep, your sep- you? keep your September, okay, available. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm I'm in, having I'm in talks to get that thing back on its feet. That was yeah. so much fun. You got to do that. I again. know. I couldn't yeah. agree. I couldn't agree more. So yes, I'm actually glad you mentioned that. We we I we won't tell Darren more. about it though. No, no, no. Darren it seems doesn't know. like you guys already are telling me about it, but you now you're saying you don't want to. You don't know shit about this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound fun at all. Wild West shootouts. Nah. <laughs> Big big golf tournament in Wyoming, no big deal. I want a piece. No big whip. I want a piece. <laughs> you want a taste? Yeah. All right, we'll see what we can do. Let's go. Uh, Jay DeMarcus, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us, brother. It is My so pleasure, good to see man. you. So good Real to hear good. from you. I I really love your sense of humor. I love hanging out with you. You're the best hang. Uh, so let's make let's make sure we do more of it this year. 
I would love to, man. Thank you guys right. so much for having me. Absolutely, Thanks, brother. Thanks, You're the best. You. All right. We'll see you. All right. See Bye. you, bud. Bye. Love that guy. He's uh he's a stud. He is. He's, he's so stud. fun. He just so can't nice. turn his zoom off. Oh, there it is. Was he still on? Yeah, I think he's still secretly on. Uh, what a wonderful guy. Jay DeMarcus, Rascal Flats. He's out there. He's living the dream. He is. You know, and I love I love um you know, uh, repurposing, um, you know, when he's, he was on stage for 20 years. Now he's, he's, re, he's producing, he's always been a producer, but now he's, you know, really focused on it, doing other acts. It's yeah. wonderful. You know, it's great. What do you do? Uh, what do you do? That's great. Besides, well, what do you do? It's great. Why do you roll your eyes when you say that? I like don't want to put any thoughts in your head. That's why I was, I was rolling my eyes myself. What do you want to do? What do you think you do? That's good. Yeah. See, you did it. <laughs> The way you do that is terrible. What? It's 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 dismissive. It suggests that there's nothing good. The sighs don't make it any better. Please don't take a big sigh. All right, let me try and do it again so you don't get sensitive. What do you do that's uh, great? That's it. Okay. I do a lot, D. Like what? A lot. A lot. Like what? Charity. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? How about all the charity? Anything else? I do I do television and film. And I write songs, too. Really? Yes. What song have you written? Can you sing me the chorus? There's uh, one called Shut Up D-Man that's wh really popular. You have a song called Shut Up D-Man? Yeah. Can you sing it? Yeah. Shut up, daring leader. Shut your mouth today. Shut up, Darren Leader. Everybody calls you D Bag, D Man, Darren Leader. I think the ending needs to work on some rhyme schemes. Uh, I don't love the topic, if I'm being honest. You know, it's kind it's of funny. catchy. You got a lot of notes, a lot of notes. Well, you're asked. You asked, so I'm no. Telling. You asked. You asked me to sing my hit song. I sang it. Can you sing it one more time? No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you can't sing it one more time. No. No. Okay. But we were recording on that, and therefore... <laughs> we'll run it back. We'll run it back. I love it. All right. Uh, it's really good. And I love you too, brother. I love you too. All right. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This has been Riggle's Picks. Fow, 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 fow. I'm Rob Riggle. I'm Darren Leader. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Stay cool. Stay cool.